telling a story, I want to direct what the viewer is seeing. I want to control what and how they see things. I use art direction, set design, costuming, camera placement, lighting, lens, focal lengths, uh, that means wide telephoto and all the lenses in between, and related to lens selection is depth of field. In the world of optics, depth of field is typically controlled by the camera to subject distance, the lens focal length, the lens f-stop number, the ISO ratings, and the format size or circle of confusion. It gets very technical. Thankfully, in iClone, we don't need to worry about such things. We aren't constrained by the rules of physics and optics. We can use depth of field under any circumstances. The bottom line, the area within the depth of field appears sharp, while the areas in front of and beyond the depth of field appear blurry. So with depth of field, you can isolate your subject to call attention to it. <laughs> there, how's that? Well, let's see if we can figure out what Cletus was talking about. Here is a, a similar scene to what we previously played with Brandine and the Swamp Man. And uh, we've turned off depth of field. And let's just look at the scene without any depth of field and see what we can see. Notice everything is sharp and in focus. Foreground frog, his action is in focus. Brandine is also in focus. The shack, swamp man comes in. He's in focus, she's in focus. And it plays okay. But uh, it can be confusing for the viewer figuring out what to see because they're looking at everything because everything's sharp. So let's go back and turn on depth of field. It's of course in the uh, camera drop down. We're going to use a camera called camera zero and uh, here is the depth of field area right here. Now let's turn it on and see what happens. Typically it's going to go totally out of focus. Everything's going to go soft. Uh, and uh, you'll want to make a selection of your target focus area. And the button for that, of course, is right here. And uh, you will get a uh, little highlight, hopefully. I want the fern to be in focus. And uh, notice it jumps into focus. Sometimes you might have to type in the number directly. But uh, right here, the focus says uh, 123 and uh, that looks pretty sharp. Uh, the frog is also sharp and I don't necessarily want him in focus yet. So let's change the range a little lower. Let's type in a 30 and uh, he starts going out of focus but the plant also goes out of focus. So uh, we can try to reselect it and it's getting hard to select because it is very close to the camera. I'm going to type in a number And uh, let's go to 100 and notice it came a little sharper. The frog definitely jumped out of focus. So now the fern is in pretty sharp focus. So that's good. And let's see what our camera does now. It's going to move on. And it's naturally going to bring into focus the frog. But when the camera comes to rest, the frog goes out of focus. We probably want to track that depth of field a little bit. So I'm going to pick another target area, which would typically be the frog. And so let's see if we can get him selected. And there he is. Okay, he's selected. So let's back up and watch our camera move again. Fern is in focus and uh, we do the uh, camera move. Dolly in. The frog comes in focus. He's going to do his action. Brandine, you'll notice it's out of focus. Now we want her to be in focus. So let's stop there and let's back up when we get that camera to start moving. He jumps, camera starts moving. We're going to want that to come into focus for Brandine. So let's click and click her and now she's in focus. But notice it's a very, very shallow focus. And uh, I would like a little more depth. So let's change this 30 to 500. 
and now the rock behind her you see is in focus some of the trees maybe so 500 might be a good number to live with so we've increased the range of our depth of field instead of being shallow it's now rather deep uh, so let's back up again and watch this play out and, uh, we go to the fern then the frog comes into focus Brandine is still soft in the background Okay, we get a little movement there. Now notice it shifted to Brandine. Uh, we want to hold that depth of field a little longer for the frog. So let's go up to our timeline, bring up depth of field, and let's click here. And there's our frog, folks. And notice what's going to happen. It's going to immediately start moving on to refocus on Brandine. I want to hold on the frog. So I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to hold down the control key. I'm going to drag out another keyframe to keep the frog in focus. So now, frog stays in focus. He's going to jump, okay, and then Brandine. So let's slide this down a little further. And let's slide Brandine's depth of field focus point a little further. So now, froggy stays in focus. Camera's going to start moving. She comes into focus. Now, we have the Swamp Man reveal. She's still in focus. We can certainly keep him out of focus, but at some point you might want to bring the Swamp Man in focus. So let's hold once again. Let's grab a keyframe for Brandine's depth of field point. And let's drag it down here. And so she's going to stay in focus to there. And then maybe we can uh, bring the Swamp Man's hand in focus. So now his hand is now in sharp focus. She's out of focus. We could change that depth so she's a little more out of focus there. And he is certainly stays very sharp. So it brings the attention onto the Swamp Man. So now let's back up. And there we go. And let's hit the space bar. Start playing, ferns in focus, camera dollies in to the frog. Frog is in focus, it stays in focus for its action. Then the camera dollies some more or zooms, and then we've got him. So I'm in focus. So we have controlled what the viewer is seeing. We can certainly now hold the swamp man's focus if we want to, and then jump back to Brandine to reveal her pick the target area. And now Brandy's sharp focus, maybe a little too shallow. So once again, let's increase that uh, area of acceptable sharpness, maybe 500 or so. A little bit of focus on the Swamp Man. So now we have controlled the viewer's attention, brought into focus what we choose to bring into focus. Now I've created a uh, second camera and I'm overlooking our scene now. Here is the camera that we were working with creating the depth of field. Here's the fern, here is the frog right here, uh, the swamp man here, branding in the background. Now uh, there is one little feature that's new and you can show the range of the depth of field by turning on the range tool. You can see the area where you're going to be in focus. And as you move along your timeline, you can see as we alter our depth of field, that little range marker will change. And so that's really cool feature that helps you visualize what's going to be in focus and what isn't. But uh, of course, typically looking through the camera lens is where you want to be. But that's a nice new feature that's uh, very helpful, I think. <laughs> there, how's that?